How is it going guys and welcome back to a new episode with some pot limit oh my content. We're jumping immediately into the action playing two tables of PLO 25 on GG Poker. Decided to jump into a very small stakes PLO session here. Give you guys some ideas on what I would do to win in these games and move up in stakes as quickly as possible. Table number one. I have queen 998 and table number two, I do go for a small bet, taking it down. Table number one, easy defend. And on this flop, we can check call, we can check race. Both is, um, both is okay, I would say. I'm gonna go for a check race this time. And table number two, we have a very easy defend. Flopping the nuts, we're gonna check and then check raise the flop. And table number one, we do turn the blockers to the straight. We're gonna bet large and table number two. Easy pot on the turn when my opponent checks back. We wanna build a pot. Get as much money into the middle with a strong hand. River is kinda interesting, the four. If we do wanna bet, if we do wanna bet, I'm gonna go for a small sizing. Trying to get called by an over pair, maybe a queen. We face the race, basically wrapping queen, queen. We do have the eight, blocking eight, four, eight, eight. I think the problem is that it's very unlikely my opponent is bluffing here. But sometimes people do, do weird stuff and I think I do have to call him down. Yes, of course, he does have queen, queen. And we will lose that one. Table one, easy open, eight, king, jack, eight, single. Pretty good hand. Let's see what will happen. 10 3 3 on this flop. Better check if both okay. I like betting a little bit more. Usually players overfold a bit versus a bet. They under check raise. And I think we can take advantage of that by putting in a bit more aggression. Turn is the deuce. I will go for another bet. Trying to make queen queen, for example, fold or 10x. My range also will have more 3x on the turn because we're on the button. My opponent does make the fold, which is good. And let's move on to the next hand where we pick up ace ace queen deuce. Beautiful hand. That's the open race. We do take it down. I do recommend you guys if you are in these games to pay very close attention to your opponents on the table. And usually one of the adjustments you wanna make is to open raise wide or wider than you normally do. Because there are so many players who are auto folding preflop in this format. And you could take, take advantage of that by raising more and taking down the pot preflop fairly often uncontested. Table one, we do face a three bet. It's not an amazing spot. Um, I think we do have to call still and um, pretty good flop. Check is the start. And then we're going to go for a check raise. We're going to go for a check raise. Turn is the queen. Pretty interesting. I do expect my opponent to bet the flop fairly often with jack 10. So we're going to pot. And see what happens. Opponent does make the call. Table two, I'm gonna open. And table one. I think we are going to bet. I'm gonna go for one third. Trying to put my opponent in a difficult spot with like a two pair hand or any hand basically that isn't a straight. Yes, you will have the straight sometimes. Table two, we're gonna check back the turn and we have to fold the river. And table one, we do take it down, which is definitely nice. Eight, seven, four, deuce. Let me actually turn on the dollar amounts to make it a little bit more interesting. Eight, eight, four, three will be a fold. Nine, nine, eight, double, definitely. A playable hand. We're going to raise it up. We have the short stack player on my left, which is not amazing. 
But if needed, we're gonna stack up against that player. We do take it down, which is nice. Table one, we're gonna limp in. There are a lot of dead big blinds in the middle, basically. So more reason to play more hands, basically. Flop a king. Let's hope all players are checking and we can see a free turn. That would be very nice. Saruf, what are you gonna do? You do limp in. Queen eight four four. Table number two. Gonna raise pretty tight big blind. Table one. Easy check, I would say. And ace and nine eight eight will be an open raise. Trip kings. Very nice. We're gonna bet two forty eight. Table two, <coughs> let's think about this. I like a check, no pair blocker, not much equity basically. We do get called on table number one, which is nice. Like queen, queen is very light. Table two, just gonna call as a small bet. see on the river what he's gonna do so my opponent bets small pretty weak i think like ace jack or better would bet larger on the on the turn i will turn my hand into a bluff now i do expect my opponent to have either a better ace or a two pair hand fairly often table one this is a very loose loose call uh, but we have an open a race player or a player that open races from under the gun with a 44 VPIP. The problem is that the small blind is very, um, very short stacked, but that doesn't make it a lot better. I'm going to go for a stab on the flop with my deuce and one heart in my hand. Turn is the five of hearts. Interesting. I think I will keep barreling now. Barreling. Gonna go fairly large. I would say that my opponent here is very capped because he doesn't bet or check raise the flop. Making it very unlikely that he has the ace of hearts there. We have trip aces on table number two. So you definitely want to play aggressive in these games because most players are too passive or most players play too straightforward. And what I mean by that is that they play a bit too, too face up as in the way they behave is often also reflecting the strength of their hand basically. So if they check on, for example, the flop, it's very likely that they have like a very, a very weak or marginal hand. You can take advantage of that on later streets by putting in aggression. Or players play too wide of a preflop range. You can take advantage of that by betting more often on the flop because your opponents are likely to not check raise you enough on the flop or on the turn, for example. So overall, putting in a good amount of aggression, I think, is uh, is a good default strategy table number one i think better check is both okay i'm gonna go for a check turn as the queen now we have some showdown value so let's check it my opponent pots pretty weird definitely weird the problem i see is i think i'm gonna call actually one one street check okay Again, definitely a bit weird. <coughs> hmm. okay, this is very light, but I'm gonna call. My opponent has a boat here. Okay, so he slow plays three three, and we lose. But that's fine. We're learning about. How the players are playing. Table number two. Top pair, top kicker. Betting. Also one diamond in our hand. 
turn will be a uh, will be a check. It's a uh, pretty good river. Check seven. Would say we do have the best hand. Raising is a little bit thin. I think I do go for it. Like I do believe that he's gonna bet like a better hand larger. So I just simply think that I have the best hand. The problem is, do I get called by a worse hand? I'm not sure. At table one, I'm gonna pot with my ace of hearts and a jack, and we're gonna take it down. 47 VPIP, like these stats, like he likes to play a lot of hands. He doesn't three bet very often. This player is gonna get the, uh, the pink tag. Is king nine six? Will be a fault from under the gun. And queen eight seven five definitely a fault against a race. Let me know, guys, if you are also playing in this game on this stake, or whether you play higher stakes, maybe even smaller stakes. And of course, if you have any questions about that, make sure to use the comment section below. I'll definitely try to answer that, although it doesn't always work out. Is queen jack four? I'm gonna check. Against a large bet. I'm gonna let it go like, this hand will be very difficult to get to showdown. My opponent bets again. Almost impossible to continue on any run out. So let's see. ACX 10 deuce. A little bit loose, but I'm going to go for it. And we flop an open ender. Against a half pot size lead, we have a straightforward call. We're too strong to fold. We're not strong enough to raise. Opponent checks. A little bit tricky. But what I think will work pretty well is potting the turn and then potting the river. If needed. Like I do think he has like queens or queen nine or maybe queen four, like all that stuff. I will have like definitely a good amount of straights. So we're gonna wrap that straight, make him fold, and take down this pot. Just one time, then not do it this time. I like that. Queen nine six, table number one. Gonna fold. This is a good hand to call. Queen queen seven seven. Not strong enough to three bet. We don't block aces or kings. And this is a fold, king jack eight eight. Interesting flop, second nut flush draw, some future blockers. A little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. I think we're also pretty deep against this player, so we could put potentially some pressure on turns or rivers. For example, on... I mean, this is a, a reasonable turn. And table one... We're pretty deep. My opponent looks pretty tight. I'm actually just going to call... This could definitely be a three bet. Table two. We're gonna bet. That's uh that's a very bad river. My opponent will have a lot of ace jack, jack jack. So we're gonna check. Deuce is yeah. Okay. Table one. It's interesting, it's interesting. I'm gonna check raise actually because I have a lot of nutted potential. Yeah, a bit unfortunate on table number uh, table number two. Would have been an interesting run out. I'm gonna raise here, and the only reason is because the big blind is very tight. VPIP only fifteen. On this flop, I will check my entire range. This is a better flop for his range, basically. I'm gonna check fold. Table one, easy open. King, 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 nine. Beautiful flop. 
Good for Frog. Let me check. Hmm. Do that now. Table two. Definitely playing. Two pair. Interesting spot. Loose open on table number one. Because we have some tight players on my left. Interesting flop. Look at this. I mean, we're definitely, definitely betting. On table number two. They both call. Table number two, I will check. Um, table one, not a great turn, not a great turn. It's a good turn for my range. Kind of bet it. Great turn. Very tight. Can I get it in? Hopefully he can find a fault. We will have like all the strong hands at this point. Do have some bluff catchers like Ace. I mean, so many of his good hands will check raise the flop or the turn. So I think I will have plenty of fold equity still, even though he only has eight dollars behind. Three betting the aces. Table number two. Against a uh, pretty tight player. Let's give him the yellow tag. King nine three. As we are three and a half. Start with a check. And yeah, it's a bit tricky. Gonna call once and then I have to check fault to turn. Unfortunately. I was thinking about it on the flop already, considering folding. Beautiful hand table number two. Thinking Jack King Nine double. Is Queen Jack eight? Against this player, oh, we're definitely eyes are raising. Couple of callers in the blinds. Top two pair, beautiful flop. Mm, potting. Usually if the money would go in on table number two, we're not in an amazing shape. But I think we still want to bet the flop. Table one, flopping an open ender. I'm going to go ahead and check back this hand. On table two, we face the three bet. Okay, mm give him a green tag. Check back table one. It's a good turn. We're calling. Checking back the turn as well. And I think we now want to get to showdown table one. We win with ace queen. Unfortunately, nothing on table number two. Look at this. Pot size raise. I wonder what he has. Pretty difficult to bet fold with aces or kings on this board. <laughs> he does do it. I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to have that hand. But. Table one, check folding the flop. Turning the straight. Gonna check call. Table two, start with a check. I'm going to fold table number one.
and value betting table number two. I will also value bet the river. Don't expect my opponent to have a lot of 9x since he checks backs the flops. Table one, ace, king, six, twos. I will only open raise this with high suits. In other words, I have the ace and the king high suit. Otherwise, I would fold that hand from early position. So the way I mark players, if you would look into the colors that are available. Let's do that for a second. Table number one, definitely raising. Complete with. Start with a check, potentially bluff on later street. Turning a wrap. I think on the turn we do want to start betting. River is the straight. I'm going to value bet my straight. And we do win. Beautiful. So, I got a couple of colors like yellow is like more raggish players who are tight. Then we got orange, which is like raggish players who are more loose aggressive, a bit spewy sometimes. Uh, this color I don't really use. Then this is an unknown recreational player, light blue. This is a tightish, tight passive regular. This is a loose passive recreational player. This is a loose aggressive or very loose aggressive tough regular. Uh, let's see. In the meantime, ace king defend. Table two. Table two. Pretty interesting. I'm actually going to pot and then fold against the check raise by these deep stack players. Table one check again. Six three, six three. Let me check now. Not an amazing run out, but let's see. We could. Oh my god! I can't see a cut in. I go here and I can't. Folding table number one. And then we got like purple, which are maniacs. Green, raggish, solid players overall. And that's about it. Pretty simple color coding system, mainly based on preflop tendencies, a little bit on postflop tendencies. But I think you don't necessarily have to use all of these colors, even yourself. Like you can also start with like four colors. Keep it simple and then add more color codings to it once you realize that you miss something, basically. Keep it simple in the beginning, guys. Keep it simple. Defending against a min race, ace, queen, jack, six. Middle pair, backdoor, flush draw. Not an amazing spot. I'm going to call once. Maybe for nine. Oops. I will have to bet now on the river. We do take it down. Nice. Check six, four deuce, folding, pocket aces. King check five, four, fold. Top set, top set, pretty dry board. 
not very likely to get action from like a weak or two pair or set hands. So I'm going to check. Also not that much protection needed against Ross. We're probably far ahead or behind against a flush. So therefore checking I think is the way to go. And on the turn we have a call. Play roll two. We're betting the flop. Turning two pair. We're now going to check. And we're going to fold. Uh, going to fold the river. Table one. So he bets pot on the turn. Folding. Ace ten nine nine, a little bit marginal, but okay, I would say. Flopping an open ender. Gonna check. Betting the flop on table number two. I'm gonna pot on table number two or table number one with my set of nine. Ace King King. Three betting against the min race, very standard. Do take it down. Seven, six, five, four, triple suited. Mm, I'm going to call. Flopping bottom pair and a straight draw. Table two. a check is the way to go. And we're going to fold against a half pot size bet on a pairing turn. My opponents check flop and turn. I think now it is time to start betting. I expect a lot of folds. Rivering the straight. So now we have showdown value. We win against Queen, Queen, Jack, Jack. There we go. Very nice. Folding. And if you guys want to practice your preflop game completely for free, then I recommend you to Click on the link below the video and create a free account at plomastermind.com. And there you can use PLO Trainer, the small stakes 100 big blind solution completely for free. And practice your RFI ranges, practice your three bet ranges, really master your preflop decisions. And that's going to have a big impact, not only preflop, but also postflop. So this is an amazing time for you guys to check it out. Link below, plomastermind.com. Create a free account and you can immediately get started. You will get an email with all the information in it. If you already have a free account, then you can already jump into it immediately. Table one, I decide to bet because my opponent is pretty loose. 58 VPIP. Look at that, giving him attack. We do turn the flush draw, but also queen 10 comes in. So we're going to check now and decide on the river. I think on a flop, I, I'm very often ahead against the king. The question is, does he have queen 10 at this point? He bets this sizing. <laughs> I mean, I have a pretty bad bluff catcher. I have a pretty bad bluff catcher. 
I don't know. I feel like I gotta do it. It's King Jack. Okay, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming for sure. I thought he would check raise that hand for sure on the flop. So that was a misread by myself. And also my hand, like it's a pretty bad love catch. So I actually think it's a, it's a pretty big mistake on my end. I'm gonna check table one against two other opponents. Fold. Table two. Money will go in against a player with only four dollars. There we go. Ace King King table number one. We're up against the beautiful Jack four three. Look at this. Look at this hand. Okay, pretty interesting stuff on table number one. This guy is super wide. I'm gonna actually four bet bluff my hand. This guy calls. <coughs> Pretty good trick here. Ace King King Jack. Not gonna gonna do it. Okay, this is a good sign so far because I think Ace Jack or better will already get it in. So most likely we have the best hand on the flop. Luckily he folds. Beautiful. Terrible run out, so <laughs> I'll take that one. I'll take that one. I would have folded pre-flop if the guy would have come over the top there. Because then he will pretty much always have ace-ace. And I'm doing very bad against that, that hand. Uh, table 2, I will call... What do we have? We have middle pair and open ender. I'm actually gonna lead out full pot. I can get it in against this player and I don't mind pushing the button out. And we can definitely get it in against him as well if needed. And I block a decent amount of his best hands basically. Table one. This is definitely a medium strong uh, table two. Money will go in. We turn a flush for. Money will go in. We will need some help. We will need some help. Ace, ace, king, nine. Let's run it twice. Let's run it twice. Table one, we win. He doesn't want to do it. Unfortunately, we don't get there. We don't get there. Ten nine eight seven double table number one. Pretty good hand. I'm gonna three bet or open raise, depending on the action. But let's see. The table one. This is a very easy bet. We're gonna um, we're gonna check the turn. And table number Okay, check, check. We'll probably lose against an ace or against queens. Table one, check, and we're gonna check call. It's a half pot size bet, half pot size bet. Look at this. Pretty interesting. I'm actually gonna go ahead and check race. I think his sizing is a little bit um, suspicious. I think his best hands, he usually bets larger. And I can sort of take advantage by that by check raising. By check raising, I remove the option for him to check back the turn and basically see a turn and a river for only $1 there. Table two, easy call, pre flop, and we flop. Pretty interesting. Open ender, second, not flush war against a half pot size bet. We're just gonna call. Beautiful turn, the set. Beautiful turn, we're gonna bet. Even though we don't have a six or a seven, 
I think we can get bet for value here. We just have too many things going on. The only question is, can we value bet the river? Can we value bet the river? We block ace three. He doesn't check raise. He can have. He can have. Eight eight five five. Okay, it's pretty thin, but I'm gonna go for it. Trying to get called by eight five, queen eight, something like that. Table two, I did decide to open raise. And on this flop, I'm gonna check back. I think we could also bet. And bet fold. Especially because my hand doesn't play great when checking. I'm gonna pot the turn. Wrapping 6-7, we block the 8, which is nice. Turning, blocking some of his turned improved outs, basically, or hand. He does make the fold. And that's going to wrap up this session, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you do so, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And also check out plomastermind.com if you want to learn more about Pod Limit Oma.